unfortunately, we have all just received news that Yoshitaka Murayama, the creator of Sukaden, passed away on February 6th, 2024. And it's a very sad time. But instead of lamenting his death, I'd like to just take some time to celebrate the games that he made, the creations that he put forward, um, the ones that I know of and that, that I played. And that starts with Suikoden, the Suikoden series. It starts and ends with the Suikoden series, really, for me. Um, I played the original Suikoden when I was but a lad. Um, I don't even remember when at this point. That's how old I am, apparently, <laughs> is that I don't even remember when I played the, the original Suikoden, but it was like... Must have been late 90s, um, either late 90s or early 2000s, probably late 90s, I can't remember, but, um, Sigurden was a really interesting series, and it's one that, at least in America, didn't really have much fanfare to it, um, there wasn't, if you go back and look at old uh, PlayStation magazines, there wasn't like a big deal made about this game uh, when it first came out, or when a lot of them came out, to be honest. Um, it was kind of, <laughs> I'm just going to use the word lambasted, uh, the original Secret on one by a lot of different places because it wasn't like a two, a 3D game. Uh, it wasn't the latest in graphics, and it didn't have a ton of the um, amazing CGs that a lot of these other games had started to have. Um, and that kind of gets, you can see that reflected in some of the scores that I got back then, which I look back on now and I kind of, I kind of laugh at that because um, I loved the game, like straight off. I, I loved it a lot. And I'm, I'm not sure what it was. I feel like it was a combination of a lot of different things. Um, the idea of having these hundred characters that you're looking for. Um, the fact that the the conflict was a lot more grounded than a lot of the other things that I had played up to that point. You know, because a lot of these games that I love, of course, you know, like the Final Fantasies, Lufia to... Um, a lot of these games have these big things, like you're defeating the the gods or the Kefkas of the world with their godlike powers. But Secret End, you were just a guy who got involved into a, a war and just kind of dragged into it. Um, and you end up being the, the leader of this rebel force. And, you know, I loved Star Wars too, right? Uh, so the idea of the the rebels versus the empire um is something that i really i just really love that idea and i still do to this day it i don't know what it is maybe it's my uh my american spirit you know <laughs> uh i'm not a huge patriot or anything but um something about that that rebel versus empire mentality um and that concept just really dragged me into the game um, and the, the combat is very simple. It's just, you know, six characters. Very quick, too. You can auto a lot of the, uh, the random encounters that you run into. Um, just overall the package. In the tactical battles, in the original, it wasn't a, a grid-based tactical system. It was just the two big armies clashing, and you would choose different, um, different ways to attack and stuff, and... Yeah, it just it just felt like a big epic fantasy sort of thing. And I love epic fantasy. I absolutely adore epic fantasy. I, I was reading back then, you know, J.R.R. Tolkien, Lord of the Rings, uh, The Wheel of Time, 
um, all of these epic fantasies. So I guess it's probably right in my wheelhouse um, when you get right down to it. And Sigurdan, it also touched on something. Um, there's a lot of emotion in it, too. It's the story of this kid who gets dragged into a war and ends up having to face his father, right? Um, and you go through the story, and eventually you have that confrontation. Um, and it's just so... There's so much to it. There's... It's so... Such a good story. <laughs> I'll just... I'll just say that, you know? It's it's just such a good story. The original Sikaden. Um, even without all of the... The extras and the CGs and 3D... All of this stuff. It doesn't need any of that. It just need to be a good story. Um, at least for me. I don't really care too much about, you know all those extra things. You give me... Today, you give me a game like Suikoden, and I will eat that up. <laughs> um, so yeah, after after playing Suikoden, you know, you wait for a while, and you get Suikoden 2. And I think um, my copy of Suikoden 2 was kind of this old copy with like a... Not old, it was... Um, it had like a sticker on it. <laughs> Because, you know, back back in that point, we had uh, rental places that you would go to to rent your games. And I, I think we got, like, an, a rental copy or something, somehow. Uh, maybe that got... Because probably because rental places were shutting down at that point. So they were selling off their games to random places. Um, I don't know why I remember, remember that very specifically, which... But... Um, yeah, and I remember putting that in for the first time and being like, yes, let's do this. Um, I had heard that you uh, you have your your old memory file of the original Sikadan, and you can move that into Sikadan 2. So, of course, I did that. Um, it was very exciting. Not a lot of games did that, and I feel like um, still not a lot of games pass, you know, the, the saves from the old game to the new game. Uh, it it doesn't like... It's not like you had a bunch of um, choices that move on from one to the next. Yeah. Sikadan 2. Even better than the first. Like, if Sikadan 1 was a great game, Sikadan 2 was, in my opinion, one of the best games. <laughs> one of the best RPGs. Uh, JRPGs specifically i'd ever played and that i've played up to this point uh not a lot holds up to it to be honest uh, and that's just because you know it took everything that was good about second and one and it it took it to the, to the next level it took it up a notch um the the way the characters interact you brought back some of the characters from the original Sikaden, um and those have like a a big part especially in the beginning to really get you hooked in and make you care about the story. Um, I think that's one thing that I'm I'm still shocked at how well he was able to do for me is that he made you care about the characters, even though there's so many. Like, there's 108 characters in each game, but you care about a large portion of them. You know, maybe not all of them, <laughs> right? Uh... There's certain characters that get their screen time, certain, char certain characters that don't get as much, but he did a really good job of making you care about a decent chunk of them. Um, and yeah, that story, Sigurdan 2, the stakes in that story, uh, I won't spoil it for people that haven't and are planning to play the, the HD remasters, uh, as I am. I'm definitely going to be playing those. Um, but wow. <laughs> Wow, the stakes. Um, story of a, a, a kid and his friend, you know, that are separated at the beginning. And it kind of echoes some themes from Sikoden 1. Um, but this time, you know, it's his friend and they're on different sides of the war. And that was a whole, a whole thing with Sikoden 2. Um... 
man. The villain in that game. Uh, <laughs> uh, Luca Blight. Such a cool, very simple character on the surface. Um, I've heard a lot of people say, you know, they don't like Luca Blight because he was just a very one-dimensional character. But I think um, when it comes to stories, you don't necessarily need these very deep characters at every point. Um, there are certain characters that, that can have one aspect to, uh, that they bring and that they really drive home. And he definitely drives home the uh, the ideas that he was brought in to drive home. Um, the whole scene with the uh, the town burning and the woman that has to get on her, her knees and um, and he says oink pig <laughs> like holy like to to um myself at that age I was just like what is this is crazy I had not seen that most of the um most of the things that happened in games up to that point for me were like very they were very vague and whenever it came to more darker themes or or it all happens off screen and you're seeing this thing on screen happening right in front of you and uh obviously your character can't do anything about it but yeah secret and two and then moving on to secret and three a very ambitious game uh split the protagonist protagonist into three different perspectives um you have this whole thing where you're uh you're the um the one character that that is supposed to be like the fire the master of the fire rune and all this stuff very interesting and i don't remember as much about secret and three as i do the first and the second one i think i played the first and second game a couple of times and i didn't play the third one as many times so i'll have to go back to that at some point um really cool ideas in that game I would say it's not um, as well executed as the first and second game, but still amazing. <laughs> still amazing. Even even like being a, a tiny step down from Sukaden 1 and 2 is still an amazing game. I remember getting Sukaden 3. Um, I was so excited. <laughs> uh, I, I took the... They used to have these stickers on the side of your your game uh that had just the name of the game on it and i put that on my wall and i was like ah, i'm gonna keep this and whenever another secret end comes out i'll put the next one up here uh of course you know that didn't go over well <laughs> so i took that down but man I, I really, I was so excited. I played through the entire thing, and I loved it. Um, yeah, I I think I picked, uh, what was his name? Ghetto? The, the dark-haired guy. Um, I think he had, like, lightning rune stuff going on. And the runes. The runes are a really cool idea, too. A really interesting way to do... The, the whole um, magical system. We have these runes of power that um, some of them are these lower level common runes and then there are the true runes which are the, uh, the very unique runes and there are only a certain amount of them. Uh, fire has its own special true rune. Water has its own special true rune and they're like tied to different countries and stuff. Uh, and of course your character is the main character gets their own true rune at some point. Um, and that's the theme that is echoed in each different secret end. Um, the only time I've ever, and I'm a very, you know, I'm a bit of a wimp when it comes to pain. Uh, you'll see where I'm going with this in a second. I'm a, a, a bit of a wimp when it comes to pain. Uh, the only time I ever thought about getting a tattoo was when I saw these, these runes and I was like, Man, that'd be cool to just have on my hand. It's this this true rune. And then I could have that. And I never did it. 
of course, because, you know, the whole wimp thing. <laughs> but, um, who knows, maybe eventually I'll get, like, a, a small true rune somewhere. Um, yeah. So many, so many good memories with the Sukoden series. Uh, entire series of games. Of course, 4 and 5, um, not his games, but, you know, he's still the creator of, of Sukoden. I played through 4 all the way, I played through 5 all the way. Um, and then, you know, we come to, um, Alliance Alive. I didn't, I didn't play through Alliance Alive. It's something that I, I'm going to get to. Uh, I, I've tried it a bit and I liked it quite a bit. I just haven't put the time into it. There's so many other different things that I've been doing. Um, Aiden Chronicle. Now, I already made a video on Aiden Chronicle. Um, just talking about what it is, uh, the people that are involved in it, and a lot of the people involved with with Sukaden series are in that, um, are on that team. The Junko Kuano, um, you know, a lot of these designers that were there are also on Aiden Chronicle. And this, this is his, his baby, you know, thing that he wanted to put forward into the world. Um, and you know, we can't know what was happening with him or if he, he knew, uh, anything was, what was going on with his illness, but we do know that he he's given us one last gift, um, and that is Aoden Chronicle. And I'm gonna play the shit out of that game. <laughs> uh, when it comes out, a couple months, I'm definitely gonna play that game all the way through. Um, it looks great. It just looks it looks fantastic. Everything I've seen about it reminds me of the old Sukaden games. Reminds me of you know True Runes. Um, another rune lenses or something like that. Um, it has the, a lot of the systems that we remember from Sukoden. With the duels and tactical battles, uh, turn-based combat, even the, uh, perspective that is in the battles are, uh, um, in Aoden Chronicles, so. That game... I'm definitely going to to be giving a lot of time to I think and really cherishing that um I think that's you know what we can do for for the brilliant man <laughs> who created this secret and series and now Auden Chronicles uh we can cherish the memories we had for the games that he created and um I guess we just move forward from there Thanks for listening.